almost did no volume. Uh oh. No, we're good. Anyways. Welcome back. Look how cute we are. <laughs> this is our first <laughs> themed podcast where tomorrow uh, morning you guys are going to wake up to Christmas. This is Christmas Eve. It happens to land on a Friday and the podcast cannot stop. We got to keep going. I think that we have a good rhythm on the go. And I want to do uh, every. I think I want to do twice a week next year in the new year. Maybe that's my new year's resolution is to work a little harder. You guys might also notice that things are moved around and changed. The only tripod I had for this camera is way too high. So again, we're, it might be a little bit of a weird angle for you guys. Um, uh, but I wanted the these tanks to be shown. So a lot of people always ask about the piranha and, and the archers and the other tanks. And now you guys can see them. We can just take a look around before we get started today. There's Tamara. You can see a couple tanks there. And then myself. Yours truly. Anyways, welcome back to another episode of Aquariums Unfiltered. My fellow tank mates, come on in. Have a seat in your little chair. <laughs> I spent my life savings on. Out of my savings account, which literally has no money in it. I don't know why people put money in savings accounts. <laughs> put them in investments. It's not for saving. <laughs> <laughs> That's for like money you don't want to spend for bill money. <laughs> All right. It's uh, toy money. We're one minute late. Today's guest has been highly requested. Um, it is, I'll just come out and say it, it is the uh, dream team, John and Lisa from KG Tropicals, uh, and I figured we'd, we'd put these guys on a Christmas special, and, uh, you guys have been requesting it so much, I'm gonna bring them in right away. So, I did a basic intro very quickly, um, I'll let you guys introduce yourself for anybody that doesn't know who these are. Go ahead. Uh, do you want to maybe ask us about her? Like, you just want us to... <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, so I do, I know that you guys are uh, John and Lisa from KG Tropicals, of course. You have the channel uh, KG Tropicals where you've amassed damn near 400,000 subscribers. That's got to be, like, close to that now, isn't it? Close. Yeah, 380. Ish. So it's yeah, there. So, well, I mean, you're closer to 400 than you are to 350. Mm -hmm. Um I like the way and I don't know, huh? <laughs> tens of millions, hundreds of millions of views on their videos. I like their story, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Was um, you know just their 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 trials and tribulations, and they haven't stopped. And they and this and the most recent comeback has been incredibly inspiring. They came back tenfold. Um, but the benefit is they're here, and I don't have to tell a story. <laughs> so I let them. Um, talk about it. you guys started off as like um well how did you get into the hobby of course i mean that's obviously the the basic question to begin with that's gonna be you first uh, i was first uh 19 years old i was with my boss i was working for a cable tv company and he hit me up and said hey meet me over at this address the address happened to be a pet store in woodbridge virginia and uh that was my first like real look at aquariums. I mean, of course I had had a couple of goldfish tanks when I was a kid and stuff like that, but I never really looked at them as something to do. I, I just, I don't know, it wasn't a big deal to me, but that day he was there shopping for fish for his new 180 gallon aquarium that he had just set up. And, uh, and that was how I got exposed to it. And, I, and that's what got me interested. Uh, similar story to yours well not similar story but similar love to yours uh, it was arowanas that kind of pulled me in and uh and that's what got me hooked so my first tank that i set up as an adult was set up for a silver arowana and uh and so that that's how i got into it but i'll let her tell how she got into it <laughs> oh well i got into fish keeping because of john bringing home a what 125 tank. okay the 125 gallon tank and i really what i wasn't into fish keeping at all not at all and he said i'm gonna go get these fish he came home with arowanas two of them and what else it was I two, didn't have two of them i just had one i thought you had two no i had one oh, and there uh was two and a tiger uh, albino oscar right and a couple other couple other things I don't even remember so anyways I started going to the fish store with him and just looking around and I kind of got a little bit more involved that away but it was for me as far as getting my first fish it was um, probably six months later maybe close to that we went to a fish store and I decided well I'm gonna get an arowana too 
And I didn't tell John I was going to get the arowana because he, what, or did I? These are silver yes, arowanas, yes. right? Actually, I did say something about it. And he said, no, it's not going to work. So I went behind his back in the fish store and I bought it anyway. She did. And uh, we were leaving. He said, "That's <laughs> it's not going to work. You're, you're making a mistake. We're going to get home. And it's, I'm telling you, it's not going to work. And I didn't listen. And we got home and we stuck my arowana in the tank with his arowana and it didn't work. <laughs> so, well, you wanted them to be friends. <laughs> so we were a couple yeah, of buddies. Why not? We could, they could each have one. And that was her, that's her I, way of like yeah. getting involved. And maybe a little too involved, like stay out of my aquarium. That's what I'd be like. <laughs> well, Get your own. We were out that night buying a fish tank for me so that I could put my arowana in my own fish tank. So that's how I got yeah. started. And those two arowanas did end up together yeah. uh, eventually. It took a while, but I was able to, to have them become friends. And then I got a tank similar in size to this one and put them both in there and they were fine. I mean, they never bothered each other at yeah. all. So it, it did end up good, but I knew it and you know it and, and everybody who keeps arowanas knows it. You know, you, you might have good luck, you might not, uh, but you better go ahead and side on it's not going to be good luck. And uh, so I, I told her not to do it, but I can't tell this woman not to do anything. I'll just end up getting my yeah, another fish. Yeah, that's pretty tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When did a fish store come into play? King George, Virginia, or something like that. King George Highway, maybe? Something like that. I can't remember. I remember. It was on King's was Highway. Was. The, the store King's was called Highway. KG Tropicals. Uh, uh, so yeah. we were breeding fish in our house. It started off in a real small room. It was like the like a, a eight by six room that we had a bunch of tanks packed into. We were breeding and we were having a lot of fun with it. And, uh, you know, we, when, we go, when we go into something, we go all in mm -hmm. and we went crazy and filled our garage up. It was a three car garage, uh, but it, it was an oversized two car garage. Oh. Anyway, we filled that up with 120 tanks uh, and we were just loving it. And, the, and a store, our, our, we had a five year plan. Right. <laughs> and that five year plan turned into a, a one and a half year plan right. uh, because a, a shop opened up literally a hundred yards from our house, right across the street and right down the road. And, uh, and we were both stupid and said, Hey, well, forget the plan. Let's just go now. I'm going to take the bulk of the responsibility well, for it, but I'm glad. well, it's in retrospect, looking back now yeah. that you know yeah. the results, but at the time you wouldn't have said this, you uh, know, it's a stupid mistake. Mm -hmm. you, it was the same as what I've done. Mm -hmm. Like everything made sense. Yeah. Um, I was perfect. following my passion. I was following my heart and you have to do yep. that. Yeah. And if, and if it doesn't work out, it's not a stupid mistake. It's a great learning opportunity. Exactly. And you know, it's, it's, it's embarrassing when things don't work out is especially for myself like i put my i put everything out for the world to see and then when something doesn't it's humiliating it's well and i i was so, doing that then, then too i mean i, I was on youtube then. yeah you were on the internet that's how i found yeah. you and um i was i was excited because i was like oh somebody else to add to the channel like um because i used to think youtube was like tv like they had mm -hmm. channels you go to a specific channel <laughs> and his was about african cichlids yeah. and it turns out he actually kind of knew i didn't like watch it a lot but he was like he knew what he, he sounded like he knew what he's he very confident mm -hmm. um so and i associate that with you know what you're talking about mm -hmm. which was a night which was a refreshing change at the time yeah to hear uh, a, a you know a newer channel coming up and that's how i i saw you then um and that was a while ago that was like seven ten years ago something it like was probably it was probably 2013 and i i mean i don't remember the exact date but i remember uh eight years ago you I think you messaged me through YouTube when you used to be able to do that. And you, yeah, used you like said, that. Hey, I shared that. your stuff. And I was like, what <laughs> this, this guy, I'm like, cause I had watched your videos and, uh, and I was like, cause you were already at the time you were the biggest channel, uh, not by much, yeah. but you know, it was, you yeah. were still, it was just happening. Probably. Yeah. I think like I was the first one, I wasn't the first one to hit 10,000 subscribers, which kind of sucks but i was the first to hit twenty thousand, and mm -hmm. i think since 15 or 20 it's just stayed like that i but, could be wrong um, but i think when i started my youtube account 
I think Dustin's channel was bigger than yours. Yep. Um, yeah, it was. He, uh, I passed him at seven. A little. He. We be, We each were in the seven thousand something. Wow. That's um, so crazy. I hit ten thousand before him, but I struggled getting uh, L.A. Fish guy, and I struggled getting p- past uh, Mr. Saltwater Tank, New York Stilo. Um, who else was there at that time? Those were like the top. The top guys and uh, i think there was more so i remember i'm sorry i'm stepping all over you like this is my show my bad it's it's gonna be the go for it. it's gonna be the theme <laughs> <laughs> i do it constantly so if you don't do it you'll never get to talk. i know you pretty well I and know i that. need i have adhd so i just i i can't help it i try not to and I, and then when i do not when i try not to say anything i'll just sit here like a little kid like sucking and mad like, hmm, i don't even want to do this yeah i can't <laughs> yeah. So what, what i was gonna say was i feel like at the time i think there were way more saltwater channels than there are than there were freshwater because like the freshwater yeah. channels there was you there was dustin uh, uh, Mark, uh, Bali one two three four five, which he changed it to African oh, Cichlid yeah. Hub. I, oh, I can't yeah. think of a whole lot more other than that. And then me, um, and then you know a couple of years later, there was a lot of a lot more, but there wasn't a whole lot of people doing this then. I mean, it was pretty sparse. No. And I always remember hearing him talk about you, because D- don't say it. Don't. Oh, but it was always good. I mean, I'm just saying. Joey already has enough <laughs> of an ego. Don't, don't worry about it. Wait. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the funny thing. So when we went to the aquatic experience in 2018, I'd heard of a few people, but the main mm-hmm. person I really knew of was you because I would always hear him talk about you, you know, like yeah. just the projects and stuff like that. And that's how I associate it, like you two. Well, and he guys. also has to, he also has to kind of, justify how much work he's putting into YouTube. And that's where I found like I was actually most useful to like the community of creators because they could be like, look at that guy. Mm -hmm. Look how like you have like, look how serious an aquarium channel can actually end up being someday. I didn't have that. I became the biggest at 20,000. I was like, wasn't making a penny. And I had to justify to my ex, like why I'm putting so much time in because before I go to work, I would work on YouTube. When I get home, I'd work on YouTube and weekends were time to make my videos Mm -hmm. for years and years. That's exactly how he was always YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. And it was like when we had the fish store, when we did finally open the fish store, you know, there was so many times I would be doing everything in the fish store so that he could do YouTube. And you know, Mm -hmm. it, it was, it's exciting though. Like I remember how obsessed I was mm-hmm. and how, ex- just how exciting it was because of the possibilities and the, and I, I have no idea where this is going, but it's so exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and here, you know, here, I, I here we are over 10 years later and my, my mother still doesn't even know what I do for a living. <laughs> I mean, well, a lot of my family doesn't either. And they think that I just sit around all day and da 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 da. And I'm like, well, I mean, I guess, you know, I guess to an extent, they're like, well, it's more mental than physical. I was like, why you gotta hate? Like, <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta say that? Like, okay. Um, if they saw the whole process, they would feel differently. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I was like, you know how you go to work nine to five? Well, I go to work seven till seven. Um, and then uh, when I'm done working, if I have my phone anywhere near me, I'm still answering questions and comments and emails and going back and forth. It's a 24 hour, seven day a week, 365 mm-hmm. days, mm-hmm. decade long job. That's very yeah. true. Um, and I'm not complaining because at, it didn't feel like that at the time. It didn't feel like I was putting in so much work. Um, you know, I, it kept me doing positive things and, you know, um, could have been doing much worse than playing around on YouTube. But hey, it worked out for me and it's working out for John. Um, what happened with the store? So the store was on the go. Um, was it just not financially viable? Um, uh, no, I mean, it, ran we out. were even then with the, the small following that we had, the store was, was doing pretty well, but we, we put everything we had into it. So there was no <clears throat> extra funds like, okay, well, we had a slow month or we had to buy more of this this month. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's a little extra reserve fund there was none of that. <clears throat> there was no credit. There was no anything like that. And so it, we just ran out of money and we didn't know. 
neither one of us had ever run a retail business before. Yeah. I'd run a business for 15 years at that point, but I, I didn't know anything about running a retail business. And so yeah. her and I didn't, it didn't make sense. Like we, we have to pay this because if we don't, we're not going to have the store. But if we don't buy this, we don't have the money to pay for this, which will, th it's all like a big circle. Oh, yeah. Snowball right. Effect. And we didn't, yeah, we bad. just didn't know. And then uh, it got to a point where we were $60,000 in the hole. Yeah. And it was like, it okay, that's, bad. that's enough. And yeah, you know, it's bad. Yeah. There comes a point where he, you have to call it quits. I mean, yeah. do we lose everything, everything, or do we just, you know, take our losses yeah. now? I've faced that recently where like, how far do I want to take this? Right. Um, so, but you know, in a couple of years I'll do it again. So, so did you guys just end up closing? Did you, did you bankrupt it or how did you end up and sell everything? How did that work? We never bankrupted it. We just, uh, we didn't sell anything either. We moved most of it back to our house, which was a different house oh, okay. at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there, the, the rest of it that we couldn't fit in our house, we just threw away. Mm -hmm. But it's, it wasn't like we were throwing away good stuff. We were throwing away tanks that you couldn't even see through the gra tanks. glass. There's yeah. a lot of fish yeah. tanks. <laughs> and the nice yeah. thing is we, we were able to, with that, let off a little bit of aggression, mm -hmm. take out a little frustration. It was there. <laughs> Oh, you broke oh, some of them. We oh, sure we did. smashed them. We took them to <laughs> your very them. own smash room. Yeah. The the people I've broken Rage a few room. tanks. Yeah. The people at our dump looked fun. at us like we were nuts because we were bringing in these. You know, my truck would have like ten, uh, twenty gallon longs stacked like ten high, strapped in, and we'd be bringing them in and throwing them as hard as we can into the dumpster, out. glass flying everywhere. But we yeah. had a blast. <laughs> I would do that. Obvious. I would make sure they broke so nobody else could have right? them. Right. <laughs> I know what the point was. Like it's, yeah. yeah. I don't mind if somebody reuses this stuff, but I'm like, if it's if I want it to be garbage, it has to be garbage. <laughs> it has to go where I'm trying to put it. The unfortunate yeah. part um, with that, though, is that we weren't in the clear. I mean, even even though, you know, we, we moved everything back to the house, shut the shop down. We, we signed a five-year lease. So the landlord of that mm -hmm. building was coming after us and... You know, our income was was gone. I wasn't making anything on YouTube at the time. Right. Um, and it, yeah, you it were was still hanging on to YouTube. Oh, I sure was <laughs> <laughs> for a long time. <sighs> well, I mean, I'm glad you did. I mean, it could have been way worse for you. So what happened with the, did he eventually just lose interest with the landlord or did he did he well, sue? Should or I, how should that I end up going? No, he, he, he passed. <laughs> He passed away. I don't mean to say that laughing, oh. but he he eventually gave up. And then a, a few years later, he, he passed yeah. away. And so but we he didn't hear from him. Darn, I bet you were disappointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, people die He every was day. a great guy, um, though. And I felt so bad for him because I would go over to his house and because his house was next door to the shop. So I would go over and sometimes like, you know, I'd bake him brownies or something. And he was a really cool guy when we were in business but he was also mm -hmm. smart he knew well if we if i try to sue them what well, am i going to get out of right. them they have nothing that's why they close <laughs> yeah. so he didn't ever come yeah. after us but he tr was kind of a jerk a little bit afterwards and i don't blame him no. because he no how much was left on the lease like how many three years, years? two and a half years two and a half. Oh, shit. but he had somebody in that how, shop. how much was the lease it was only twelve hundred a month. Was it? Yeah, it was twelve hundred a month, still which a is big chunk of money. around here. That is absolutely dirt cheap, and it was it was like two thousand square feet. Right. Um, With no insulation, practically. Well, in that one section, yeah. Oh, but I mean, it was it was a great spot, and if I was given that spot right now, oh, the things I could do with it. But. Um, you know, I mean, it just didn't work. I, I don't know mm -hmm. really what else to say. I mean, I, I feel like if we were to do it now, we're not going to. But if we were going to do it now, I I know more about the industry, knowing more people in the industry. I feel like we could do it a whole lot better, but I can't imagine yeah. we would ever try again. Not not that way. It definitely takes takes a few relationships to, to, to do something like that successfully. So you close that down. Um, you 
you go back into YouTube a little bit, but obviously YouTube wasn't making you anything. Uh, so you, I'm pretty sure that you needed, I think you started up like a woodworking business or restoration business or something like that. If I remember, properly. I, um, I didn't start it up. I actually, I never shut it down. It, it was just one of those things where that was my business that I had before doing all this. And, uh, so I just kind of, it was the kind of business where I could literally just flick a switch and say, okay, I'm back in business again. And, and then all of a sudden start, uh, making an income again. And that's exactly what I did. I could bore you to death explaining how all that works, but um, but it was basically servicing warranty customers for furniture. And so I, oh. I'm either working or I'm not. And so I basically called up a company and said, hey, I'm willing to do calls for you in my area. They said, okay, and boom, I was right. back full time doing that. So it, it was something I always had in my back pocket. And mm -hmm. it was kind of a safety net, which was nice. I I did that while we had the shop right. for about a year and a half in the very beginning and then it was just it was too much I couldn't do it all so um i just went back to doing that once we got I, well actually it was about a year after we shut the shop down i yeah. went back i held on as long as i could to oh, try to oh do gosh. this yes. for a living and then yeah i was the one i think i brought in more money during that year than you did because i was scheduling for you but i was also scheduling for another repair person that we were friends with so it was i was patiently you know she never complained though <laughs> which is surprising I, yeah i was just like okay do your youtube thing and work <laughs> you know doing that when you have a chance <laughs> It was it was bad. Yeah. I mean, and I, I finally it's tough to convince anybody of doing this. Well, uh, until it's successful and then you can start showing like payments mm -hmm. and you're like, see, right. now Something to at least I'm making money, work, yeah. you know, and, but when you're not, when it's only a couple hundred bucks or a few hundred bucks, I or, never had to convince you know, her, maybe. though. I mean, she was on board with it. But when it got to that point where we had no income, YouTube wasn't any kind of, I mean, a couple hundred dollars, but there was nothing really yeah. coming in. Uh, I, she started putting out a couple of little worn, little little <laughs> signs like, "Okay, it's, it's time to put your big boy pants back on, right. and uh, be a man, and and go back out and, <laughs> and make a little money." But uh, it just took me a year to figure that out, and then I went back and, you know. And you took a break from YouTube, yeah. um, and I think it was like a year or two, and then you guys came back. It's almost like it was like you took the break off. And it, I don't care why you took a break or whatever. It probably has something to do with, like, I got to make money and pay bills and stuff. That's but, exactly it. Um, but you guys came back orchestrated almost. Like, you guys had a game plan. Like, if we're going to do this, we're going in 100%, both of us, uh, and we're really going to put in effort. And you guys uh, started creating videos outside of your norm. Mm -hmm. um, and you found little niches that you were able to capitalize on, that you enjoyed making those types of videos. And then your channel just, like, started to explode. Um, that's what it and then you started a store well an online store yeah, yeah same that's thing. Yeah. that's what it looks like from the outside looking in and and you and i weren't talking at the time so you probably didn't really see what was going on but uh it was not calculated at all when we came so, back I, I i tell people this and they they don't want to believe me but it's fine i came back with no agenda whatsoever i, I came back to it it was just me just him and I just wanted to be a part of the community again. I mean, I know how cheesy that sounds, but it's absolutely true. I felt like I was missing that yeah. thing. And I came back to it. And that aquatic experience that she's talking about, that she went to, that's what brought her back into it. But see, I was never into yeah. it. I was not involved in the community. I never answered like comments or even, I never went on YouTube. I didn't know who anybody was in the comment section. I didn't even know who these new YouTubers were that were at the aquatic experience. So I, I, I had heard of Rachel and I met her there and I met you there. Oh, like you didn't know anybody. No, anyway. I wasn't involved oh. in YouTube. I would make videos once in a while because, you know, John was like, hey, you wanna, do a video and you know talk about discus or something so i would do that because see i was more of the fish keeper person you know i was into the hobby at that point a lot more i wasn't yeah. into youtube so when i did videos it was it looked like i was stressed because i was i i was stressed mm -hmm. about being on camera but um other than that when it 
comes to like getting into YouTube full force and full time and stuff, that happened after the aquatic experience. And uh, that's when I started getting more involved and I would go on live streams, like in the chats and stuff and comment, but I wasn't involved before then at all. And then. And I didn't ask her to be involved either. She, you know, I came back into it, like I said, just to be back in this again. And, and yes, I saw when I was on my break, that was when you just absolutely exploded. Uh, several other channels yeah. blew up, like past me way, left me in the dust. Uh, naturally, I wasn't doing anything, but I, I was so inspired by that. Like, oh, wow, like finally people are starting to watch. Yeah aquarium stuff on on youtube i want to be in the involved in this again i don't care if i'm making money i don't care about all of that i just want to get in this again but then we hit on a couple of things and then it was like oh wait a minute we're on to something here and that's when we really started to kind of cultivate it and uh and find our niche like you said right. and then uh and then yeah now here we are so uh it genuinely did though it was me coming back just because I wanted to be a part of it again. Um, and then I'm pretty life sure has changed you, forever. you had to convince me to go to the aquatic mm -hmm. experience that year too. I didn't want to go. I was like, eh, what and do I, I want to go for? <laughs> I didn't convince her because I wanted her to get involved in YouTube. I just convinced her because I didn't want to go by myself. <laughs> right. And then I went and it was like, after that, I met a lot of people and I was like, well, if these people, can make YouTube videos. Why can't I make YouTube videos? There's absolutely yeah. no mm -hmm. reason why I can't do this too. So that's how that happened. It's not as exciting a story as you might think. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you know what? I'm gonna scratch this when we're done. It's I'm just gonna. No, God, no, no. I was um I was making a post. <laughs> I forgot to post something earlier, and I was just <laughs> doing it now. It's probably the most inappropriate thing. If I don't do it right now, I just won't post it it's done now. i know how that works um so i was a little distracted <laughs> yeah um yeah so what you got you have your online store as well but it's what does kg tropicals mean what does kg stand for we live in king george county virginia oh that makes and sense. that's that's what <laughs> that is go. um maybe king not george. for long we'll, we you know we don't know what's what the future holds but uh that's that's what it is and it, i mean yeah, oh, there's dog. really no other explanation for it. My <laughs> dogs are making noise here. Sorry. <laughs> what kind of dogs do you got? Two chihuahuas and a beagle, but the chihuahuas are in here. And I, if I seem distracted, it's because they have found something. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a cricket or what. And they're chasing something <laughs> around this garage. And I don't know as what it is. As long as it's but... not a snake. You guys are in your garage? Yeah. Yep, this is our, huh. our two-car garage. The, when we... When we talked in Dallas, you guys were talking about you were you were in the market for a new place. Have you come any closer? Have you gotten any closer? Um, <laughs> I know that the one place you described was the I think the only downfall to that was there was no Wi-Fi or there was there no was internet. absolutely no Internet. I was telling him about the, the yeah. Pamplin house. Yeah, that oh, that wow. house is is out. Uh, but we are still actively mm -hmm. in the market and. Uh, that's all we can say about that. <laughs> <laughs> we are not going to be here forever. Uh, we're at a place. I mean, like I said, I'm sitting in a garage. It's not very nice. Uh, looks nice. It looks like a basement. Well, it's, yeah, it looks it like a basement. finished basement. It's because it's what you see. But if I was to take this camera and move it around. Yeah, I guess. Uh, That's true. But, yeah. I do that. And too. I spend a lot of time out here, and I, I don't like spending a lot of time out in my garage. But, you know, I have AC out here and stuff. So, I mean, it's fine. But we are right now the the website has done really well i mean it's it's gone way farther than we expected it to so we are literally like packed to the gills no pun intended with stuff in this house and we can't do anything else i mean and so we're kind of in a limbo period like we can't add any more tanks so our content that we create for the for youtube is like what do we even do uh the, the basement is jam packed full of product and full of betas. So it's like we're in this period where we're stuck. We have to move the business out right. and we're both very hard headed. We don't want to lease a building somewhere to put all of our product in. 
Because you, so, you learn from your mistakes, and we definitely learned yeah. from the fish store before. So we're doing things much different. Well, and it's not only that. The nearest warehouses to us would be an hour away. So we'd be paying three or $4,000 a month for a warehouse that we would have to drive separately an hour each way. So it's like, forget all that. We, we don't want that. You guys, you guys get snow there too, right? Very little. Uh, nothing like Nova Scotia, but we get a few <laughs> inches a year. It's not anything. What about one of those uh, pop-up garages? Oh, yeah. Um, are, you just I mean, worried, are you worried about like somebody getting into it? It's, I, we're renting here. So, oh, okay. I, I mean, the way I look at it is, hey, let's let's just find a place that we can move both our family and which are it's only going to be her and I right. with next summer. It'll be just her and I um, and then also run the business from there, too, and have space to be able to expand if we want to build a warehouse or whatever. And we've got a couple places in mind. We'll we'll have some announcements to make, hopefully. pretty soon. Is that is that your next move? Is that what your 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 one of your goals are is to to move into like a retail location to have another store no. of some oh. sort or no. just to stay online i uh, i mean online is for they spit it's it. the way to do it in these days i mean it's so much better i'm not opposed to a fish store i just don't want to own one myself uh because then you have to be there and you or you have to staff it and there's all the insurance and all of this stuff mm -hmm. i just don't know that that's something either she's hinted about wanting to have a beta store mm -hmm. Which, oh. I don't know. I mean, if, if that happens, it's going to be because of her. But. I kind of had a feeling that it was Lisa that was uh, <laughs> got the, the betas on the, on the roll. Oh, yeah. it definitely was. They, yeah. 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 But it's smart because you can ship them anywhere in the United States. They're 99.9% .9 survivability yep. rate. I mean. Yeah, they ship and, really uh, well. You guys, you guys are getting in some really cool betas. They, I was checking out their site a couple of days ago. And they have some really, like, the types that I would actually consider keeping. No, I need one. Yeah, no, and they're really nice. Cuppies. <laughs> I, I would, you know, I would send you one, but the problem is, <laughs> we send. Well, I don't care about that, but we send King of DIY some, some betas. Then everybody's going to be messaging. Well, how come you can send them to him, but you can't send them to me in Toronto or Vancouver? <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, I mean, we get yeah. the emails every single day. Do you ship to Canada? Do you ship to Canada? Mm. So. And to other countries outside of. I mean, oh, you yeah. could, but you could ship to Canada, but I mean, half of them are going to get caught, stuck at, in customs. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, it's a huge risk, like even importing. Um, Imagine. But anything coming from the States, it's like that invisible line that goes across that land mass is taken so seriously. Wow. It is. So ridiculous. But I can get something from China tomorrow. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our governments are a little silly when it comes Sorry. to that stuff. What um what's a fish that you uh that you don't have anymore, you know, rehomed it, it died, et cetera, whatever the case might be, that you really wish you still had? Hmm. I'm gonna let you go first. I've been talking too much. I mean, I have Okay. Is it those silver air one? Well for that's for gonna me, be mine. <laughs> yeah. Well for yeah. for me I still have my discus and I love my discus. Betas I have a bunch of them. I would say I'd like to have my own Embuna tank again because I really enjoyed that. I like the Embunas, the variety, not just the yellow labs. Even though I love the yellow yeah. lab tank, but I'd like to have my own Embuna tank again. Definitely. Yeah, and for me, it would be Arowanas. I mean, I had them in this uh, when I first set this tank up, and uh, the Oscars, they decided they didn't want Arowanas in that tank. Mm. And so... Uh, one of them jumped out. It was my fault. I did a video about it. I felt like an idiot. Um, one of the Oscars? No, one of the Arowanas. Uh, and it was, oh. a, it was a gap about that big in the back of the tank. You know that plastic strip that you put connecting the, the glass yeah. canopy to the... I had one of those missing a little spot. That was the only spot that was open. So it, All mine are missing. Uh, <laughs> they all eventually go missing because I cut them out and right. cut them out until it looks like... Like, I don't know, teeth or something, because yep. there's so many cutouts. I'm like, yeah, you can get out of here. So he, it had so, to have been that. Uh, and then another one died because the Oscars just annihilated it. But and you then, know why uh, I think the one uh, arowana jumped out? I really think it had to do with, I had a rescue cat out here. And could have been. one of the kittens. 
And I think the kitten was jumping up there messing with the arowanas. Like, you know, being on top of the tank, I think the arowana, you know, jumped to try to get the kitten or something. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. it would bait it with yeah. its yep. paw. Yep, I th our guys would never. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, on the positive side of that, it's, you're going to very rarely see an arowana of any species over five years old in the home aquarium. They simply just kill themselves right. by smashing into decor or they get in a fight or they simply jump out. The silver arowanas especially, they don't call them water monkeys right. or nothing. They, they've evolved to jump out of the water, not only skim the surface. Those barbells are to sense any sort of movement on the surface, but uh, their mouths, everything is designed to go up. Mm -hmm. Like either mouth juts up, they, they open their mouth to the, like almost like a drawbridge, but yeah. their powerful bodies are meant to yep. jump and they just jump. I don't know why. I mean, did they see something? Probably. Or did they just get that urge? Maybe it's a energy built up in their muscles that they have to release it every once in a while. Could be anything like that. I mean, fish can store certain, um, cer certain things within their body. Like uh, stress, for example, yeah. you know, when a fish just croaks, you have no clue what it is. A lot of times it's acute stress, <laughs> um, true. just minor, minor little, minor little bunch of stress. I'll never have the Asian arowana like you are fortunate enough to have. And I've since the day I met you or been exposed to you, I've been jealous of you for that. Uh, unless our my government decides to stop being stupid. Uh, well, there's a few ways you can get one, and you are already qualified because you are an educational center. You, if you apply for the permit, I bet you'll get one. Huh. A lot Thanks. of YouTubers don't know that Thanks, loophole, Jerry. and I tell them all the time. I'm like, all you have to do is apply <laughs> for, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to be a wildlife <laughs> permit or a, a city's permit or whatever the case might be, but because you are technically an educational facility even though private you have uh, a track record of years and years of documentation of proving that you are an educational facility and that is one of the only ways that americans can keep them is either in zoos or educational facilities of some sort or for um, uh, science uh, research purposes that you can keep cities listed or Music appendix a. i'll have to look into that sorry <laughs> yeah. yeah look into it because I can get, I can technically get tigers if I really wanted them. I can get, I can get any sort of, because I had that permit before, um, and uh, it, it it's it covers everything for me in Canada. Anything that's endangered or uh, that's illegal to keep in any way, so mm -hmm. long as you are can prove that you're an educational facility, you can prove that the animals can't get out of their enclosures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a few things that i have to jump i'll have through. to delete that video uh, then. i'm not sure what yours are <laughs> yeah i'm not sure what yours are going to be to jump through but it's very minute and now that i've said it i bet you they're gonna get a lot of applications but <laughs> you technically can have them i mean i've never heard um, that if that's true i will have one i, I mean or at least i'm gonna try it's well, true but well why can't why why can a zoo keep them but uh, a home i've never even can't. seen one in a zoo Oh, I do. Well, well you live in Canada. I've never well, seen one here. Aquarium. No, we don't have we don't have them in Canada. We go, I, every time I go to America, every every aquarium in America it's, has them. The one I was just at in Dallas had them. They had them outside. Yeah. Oh. Big ones, wow. big beautiful ones. The nicest uh, red arowanas I've seen at a public aquarium oh, before. Cool. Well, that makes they had me them mad. at the shed. They had them. <laughs> they have them uh, in Orlando. They had them. Uh, frig, every every aquarium that I've gone to had them. Hmm. Or one. Usually they're the green arowana, so you might as well just get a Jardini. But hmm. yeah. someday. Hmm. But I, I'd I'd like to do. Yeah. I don't know if I would do it something like you've done, uh, or if I would actually go for a an actual in the ground pond, um, covered with with <laughs> silvers in it. I mean, silver arowanas look really good from above, kind of like koi do. Uh, but I, I yeah. do want to do something big, way bigger than this. Uh, and do it, do it specifically for arowanas and maybe stingrays, because uh, that's that's another one that I. I love. think that I think it'd be super cool, but you're eventually going to want to see them from the side. Oh. If I were to do big fish in a pond, and if it wasn't going to be like high end koi, it'd be sturgeon. Oh yeah. That's cool because those guys are amazing from the top and not so much from the sides or bottom. They mm -hmm. look beautiful from the top. I think they're a top look viewing fish type of didn't view. we see those i'd probably get mm -hmm. the diamond back and the keys aren't they tough to keep though sturgeons no they're pretty straightforward i mean they just get absolutely massive they're i mean huge. i think they get up to 12 feet 
or 15 feet some of those some species depending the freshwater ones get i think a little smaller but what we saw were yeah tarpons. i mean um tarpons, yeah. she was asking if sturgeon was what we saw down in the florida keys and it was tarpons that we were feeding and and they were nine feet long they were unbelievable where was this like out just out in the wild yeah, yeah. uh in florida keys it's a tropical climate uh that's a very common fish out there uh and there's a one particular we went scuba uh snorkeling i didn't go and the uh <laughs> the the marina where the snorkeling went from there was like this whole area where they sold chum and you could throw it in and uh college kids were holding it and letting the tar tarpons tar tarpons like swallow tarpons. their hands they're like big long tuna yeah <laughs> their mouths are yeah they're they were huge they, do they have teeth i don't have like big teeth i think they have a uh, more of a uh, modified like scales in their mouth that are i'm not i'm not completely familiar with them but mm. i could be wrong but i think they're more crushing than than tearing there was a guy otherwise you wouldn't be able to there, you wouldn't be able to put your hand in their mouths yeah. well college kids can because they're that's what that's what invincible. we were watching them do they did that <laughs> And the fish would come all the way up to like their elbow, and then when they would leave, you know, let go, there would be a nice little red ring, but it wouldn't be like gushing yeah. blood or yeah, cut or anything. It was almost like it was, I don't rubbed too hard or something. I don't know, but it was it was always leaving some kind of a mark. Yeah. But it didn't take the arm off, so they thought it was fun. <laughs> I'm too old for that. Do you ever get Do you ever get recognized? when you're out in places like that fish stores excluded of course i think almost oh. every youtuber's got to yeah. be spotted yeah. at some point i did it at walmart yeah at walmart they knew they knew yeah you? i well a couple times uh one time it was a cashier and she was super excited and she was like she stopped working and she said can i take a selfie with you and i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> That's it fun. Was, it's tough to get used to at first, and it's kind of weird. But eventually, you can you understand it because you've if you've ever met like somebody that you consider to be yeah. a celebrity, then you know that yep. feeling. Mm -hmm. And how so? All you can do as the person that they want the picture with is give them what they want. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, unless it's an inappropriate time. Like some people will wait behind me in the bathroom oh. while I'm peeing. Oh, that's. <laughs> And then they're like, hey, Joey, can I get a... I'm like, I'm just going to wash my hands. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe out there. Like, this is, yeah. I was like, I thought you were waiting for one of the urinals. Oh, <laughs> like, this is kind of weird. But that happens a lot. Just like over your shoulder. Yeah. The most, <laughs> yeah, over your the shoulder. most <laughs> memorable <laughs> one for me was actually while I was on my break, oh. uh, which, was, which made it even weirder because I did not expect, you know, I, was, I hadn't been on YouTube for like a year. We were in a different yeah. state. We were in Reading, Pennsylvania oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. at a Tim Allen show. And we were walking out of the theater and this dude was staring me down from like 100 yards away. And I was like, oh, no, this guy's going to attack me or something. And it turned out he was a yeah. fan of the channel. So that was uh, that was wild, you know, and he's like, what are you doing here? It's Pennsylvania. <laughs> so but it, it has happened. Not. I, I mean, fish stores, obviously. But uh, I think the most awkward one for me was, again, in Walmart, I was turned around. I was, you know, not even facing the person, but I was talking to my daughter and I hear Lisa and I'm like, and I turn and they were like, you're Lisa from KG Tropicals. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he said, I recognize your voice. And I was like, that's awkward <laughs> because that's the thing I've always heard is the most annoying part about me is my voice. So I'm like, oh, I'm sorry if I annoyed you. <laughs> oh, God, no, there's other there's other things that are way more annoying. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh, about me? No, I, I always thought you would be I always thought you were going to be shorter in person oh. but people probably thought i was going to be taller that's so funny but you were like normal yeah. height i thought you were going to be like like a uh, small person yeah height. no it's she is it's short it's just that you're not gifted in that area either so that's to rude. you she was normal <laughs> no she's normal height yeah, she, yeah, she, oh, yeah she's normal <laughs> height to me <laughs> normal height to a vertically <laughs> challenged person like yourself oh my gosh you're so rude <laughs> He's not far off. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty accurate. I'm only five nine. But yeah, so are you guys booked for the any new shows for the new year, or is that it for this year? And 
What do you have on the go? Uh, the next one that we know of is is Aquashella Orlando. Mm. Um, oh, okay. yes. you're asking fish shows. I'm uh, like, that's what you're yeah. asking about. Um, mm-hmm. What else would I be asking about? What else? Well, I don't know if you've had, <laughs> like, other you podcasts or other, you know, fish shows. Or oh, something yeah. Like that, but, you know. Well, those are always. Um, but yeah, the the Aquashellas, as far as I know, we will be at, at all three of them again this year. I don't know. Uh, I mean, we might. It depends, you know, on what's going on next year, too. For You already said for sure Orlando because you're speaking. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, are you keynote? Mm. I don't think so. Um Okay, but they they haven't announced that yet. But there's a there's a heavier hitter there that's going to be talking too. So I I would imagine he would get the keynote, which I don't oh, I don't knows. particularly care. I don't want to do any talking anymore. <laughs> I'm just not a fan of it. I'd rather just attend the shows and enjoy them and get to meet everybody. And other than that, that's a lot of I don't want to <laughs> commit to anything. I just don't like being like a. I just don't want to be on stage like that anymore. I've done it so many times in so many years and like a hundred times and ugh, just does nothing for me. It's still new enough um, for me or I, I enjoy Yeah. I, I've yeah. only done a few. Which one? What? Three? Three. I did one. So. Yeah. If you, if you, <laughs> and the same with like, um, what's his name? Said that too. Um, Serpa, uh, Tanner. He said that, you know, the, the events and stuff are all new to And I assume that everybody's been doing it as long as me and been doing those shows and all that stuff. So I just assume that when I say, you know, I've had a little, I've, you know, had my fill, I just feel mm-hmm. like everybody be like, yeah, I understand. But no, they're still pumped about it and excited about it in the same way I was. Yeah. Um, I just want to go back to like enjoying it like a hobbyist would. Mm-hmm. And I remember that feeling of getting to see everything and walking around and enjoying stuff. And it's just not like that anymore for me. I've just booked for too much and doing too many things and. I want to spend time with people and enjoy myself rather than, you know, working like that. The one thing I am going to ask them, the the organizers, is if I could do earlier on Saturday. uh, Because there is a massive wave of relief once the talk is done. And every single one I've done so far has been on a Sunday. And so, like... Sunday, you know, I do my talk and I'm like, okay, whew, like I enjoy it. It's great. But I, now I, I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's all done. I can relax and the show's over. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'd like to be able to have that feeling and still have the rest of the weekend. To but, go around and hang out with people and do stuff like that. Right. Well, I still felt that pressure and, you know, is it going to be a good talk? Are people going to like it? Is anybody going to show what's going to happen? Like I always thought about that, but even like the like Sean would would say like Joey it doesn't matter what you talk about people are just <laughs> yeah. coming to see you in person and, and to hear you talk and it's mm-hmm. going to be the same for you too John like as as horrible as it sounds like and like as arrogant I guess you could say it's really not it's just the, the fact of the matter is like people that are coming are literally just coming to see you in person and hear you talk and no matter what you talk about or how it goes in your mind, they're going to love it. Mm-hmm. Um, so just always keep that in mind going into it. Even though I used to keep that in mind, it still never worked for <laughs> and me. And it so won't work for me why. either. <laughs> I'm still going to stress yeah. out about it no matter what. I mean, but it's it's a good stress. I mean, I don't I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining about it. I mean, it's well, it's good. It's good. It's good to be stressed and care because that's exactly what it is. You just care and you mm-hmm. want people to get the most out of it and to actually enjoy right. it. Like if you stop caring, it's going to show. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to just walk up there and just be myself. <laughs> I mean, I want to go up there with okay, a plan and, and know what I'm going to do. And so there's that that stress of, you know, is it going to go OK? Am I going to walk in there and there's going to be four people in there, you know? Uh, so once it's done, it's like, okay, I don't have anything left to worry about. I can just relax. And that's, that's why if I could have like, I might be going to Orlando, huh? I might be going. I said, I might be going to Orlando. I just don't want to be booked for anything. I might show up. I've done it a few times to other shows. I I might, I don't know. I I don't know for sure. You know what? I want to say something, you know, when you were in Dallas, you came across so much different than the way like when I met you in 2018 like you seem like the person that I watch videos of back in the day you were a lot more 
I don't know, it looked like you were a little bit more comfortable being around people, you were hanging out with people more, you were hanging out at the YouTube booth, and you just seemed more involved in the fish tube community, mm -hmm. you know? Well, the, when you met me in 2018, that show didn't want me there. I flew down on my own, oh. um, never announced. I was there for other reasons. And then I just stopped by the show to handle a couple of things, and then that was pretty much it. So I wasn't there to meet anybody or be at a booth or it was I had other things that I was handling so um that was probably one of the worst times to meet me um because I just had I wasn't specifically at it was the aquatic experience yeah right yeah I wasn't and I didn't I didn't like the people at the aquatic experience I didn't think they supported the actual hobbyist I didn't think they cared about the hobby itself I think it was more so industry driven and trying to make a quick buck and I think that they were onto a good thing at first, but when they turned their backs on actual hobbyists, you know, the bloodline of this hobby, that's when I was like, eh, I want nothing to do with you either. Well, um, I just want you to know. But then you look at. Oh, no, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I have nothing good to oh, say. Well, my, <laughs> point, my point to that was not to, to, like, criticize you or anything. I was just letting you know that it was recognized and you just seem so much more down to earth and like, I don't know, I, I looked at you a lot differently after, or, or not Orlando, oh, Texas. she hated you until Dallas. I did no, I'm not, just I just, the thing <laughs> is. Well, that, I, that would be understandable. A lot of people might only have one interaction with me and man, I'm human. I might be having a bad day. I might be going through something. I might have something else on my mind. There might have been some, but um, also um, people put me on a pedestal. And they're like, that's the king of DIY. Mm -hmm. And then I have to live up to this superhuman expectations. Mm -hmm. And and like they and I do get treated differently by everybody a lot of the times. And I was never a fan of that. Sometimes yeah. I am because, you know, you got, I got to do that too, John. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was just, it, I was dying over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, it was never, a, it was never, um, it was never easy to go to events and do anything, especially when things started getting big for me. Um, but uh, I, I, that's one of the things that got lost in translation is just like being a hobbyist. And I know some people right. are like, Joey, you're beyond that now. You're just, mm -hmm. you know, um, but, you know, I just have to restructure things. I don't want to be in the limelight anymore. I don't want to be on the stage. I want to step aside and let, let John get up there. And let other hobbyists and creators get there because it's not because I'm stopping them. It's, it's that one extra spot now that they can fill mm -hmm. instead of it being always me. Because mm -hmm. I was supposed to be keynote for Aqua Shotla forever that yeah. until the uh, pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. um, then obviously things stopped and whatnot. But he's, yeah. they, they were both like Sean and George were like, for, you're, you will always be keynote and mm -hmm. we want you at every event. I was like, well... I've never noticed any benefits from being keynote other than, you know, I get to be keynote and it's the most important uh, role. But um, uh, I just, I thought it'd be more important to, you know, have other people do it. And he, John did it once or twice and he appreciated it way more than me. And it's not because I don't appreciate it. It's just because I've done it so much and it's yeah. new for him. And, and, and other creators got to be like in that in that spotlight and mm -hmm. let them because I mm -hmm. don't want to do that anymore. I mm -hmm. like to make my videos. I don't care about numbers anymore. Yeah. Everything else doesn't is not nearly as important or matter to me as much as it once did. Um, I just want to s enjoy myself and be happy with my hobby and be a hobbyist again. Mm -hmm. And in order for that to happen, I have to drop a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time. You know, it was a whirlwind for a while. I mean, 2017, 2018. Yeah, I was not ready for that. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Most people wouldn't be. Nowhere. Well, you definitely yeah. seem like you've come a long way since then. And, you know, one of the things that kind of humanized you, I noticed, was like that picture of you with that little boy. I thought that was really cute. He probably doesn't even oh, remember. Man, he probably took 60 pictures with pictures. little yeah, boys there. Was, <laughs> I think he was wearing one of your shirts. And it was just, it was adorable because. Oh, the little, little yeah. guy. Man, that was hilarious. Yeah. That was the smallest size I sell, I guess. <laughs> and his father cut it up to make it fit <laughs> yeah. him. And yeah, that was funny. Um, yeah, that's, well, see, I, I, I've got children and I love uh, kids. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy when I get to meet them and talk to them because they're so um, innocent and 
they like you for the right yes. reasons and they're they, pure yeah they had they don't have it like horrible opinions over mm-hmm. anybody else they just really like you and your videos mm-hmm. and it's just a great interaction i enjoy it and stuff and uh well i meet with like a lot of people and whatnot but yeah it was a good one i think aquashella does a really 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 good job of catering to the kids too i mean they they really go they they do things that uh, aquatic experience to my knowledge didn't do Uh, maybe i just didn't see it i don't know but it just seems like so much more of a kid-friendly place at aquashella's aquashella is good at taking what's working and what has been proven to work at other shows yeah. and putting it into theirs. So the kids aquascaping contest, mm, that's Dustin's right. fish tanks. The aquascaping contest in uh, the scape off, I created that. Mm-hmm. Um, they're really good at taking the best parts of things and then glamorizing a lot of other things and making it actually fun. Yeah. Whereas other events are like, let's jam as many booths in here as we can. Speakers can be in another building for all we care. Um, and that's it. Have fun the only other time you're going to have a good time is at club level events. Um, when you go to an aquarium club, those are tend to be my favorite types of events to go to or like uh, um, club conventions as opposed to the big, big ones. But um, yeah, I think Aquashell is doing it right, right now. It'll be interesting to see where it goes in two or three years or how long it can last or whatever. Cause it's not easy to run those shows and yeah. they're not always financially um, rewarding and, See what happens. I've only been to the one, so I have nothing to compare it to. (laughs) Well, I hope they bring the plant guy back. The plant guy? The house plant guy? I hope they don't. I hope he stays home. That was the best. I love that booth. (laughs) Made me go broke. I heard about him. He was supposed to be like the super good looking guy that brought a bunch of house plants. He looked like Keith (laughs) Urban. He's genius. He looked just like Keith Urban, and he's selling house plants. I'm like, come on, man. What are you like doing? The, the moms, the single moms. Not for me. <laughs> the women. <laughs> selling I bought plant. a couple plants, so. <laughs> <laughs> that she doesn't need. She's like, oh, yeah, so tell me more about this one. <laughs> 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 ah, at least she admits it. It's a. Uh, yeah, the, well, that's what a lot of companies will do is they'll they'll put like a really pretty girl at their booth or a couple. And I think it's genius. That I was think his company, like, though. Like, it was it was his booth. He just happened to look oh. like Keith Urban. He was one of those jerks that was just born that way. <laughs> I hate that guy. That <laughs> I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> no, I like giving him a hard yeah. time because the amount of money she spent with him. And it wasn't because he was a good looking guy either. It was because. No, it's quality it was plants. Stupid were plants that are great not. Plants. Re- I'm getting big trouble for saying really they were stupid. strong. <laughs> Really strong, full, sturdy, sturdy <laughs> gorgeous plants. Well, the one only had one leaf. So. One little leaf, eight hundred dollars. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> it's rare. <laughs> it's, it's rare. It's like a like a like leaf corals. from outside stapled to a no. twig. <laughs> I swear that is exactly what it was, except it was tied to a twig. It's a variegated andesoni, and it's very rare. There you go. Sounds like a fish. Disown on. <laughs> I mean, you're. Do, do you ever plan on? Go, do you ever plan on going any like collecting trips or anything like that, or going into the Amazon or Thailand yeah. or anything crazy? Um, Does that interest it, you? It kind of doesn't. I mean, if I was to do that locally, I think that uh, that would be fun. Or, or if somebody was to like pay me to go to something like that, I would entertain it. But I'm. I'm weird about going into dark water that I can't see into. Uh, it freaks me out. I don't know. I mean, my, I, I, I know exactly why it is. I watched my brother and when I was a kid step on a glass bottle and end up in the emergency room uh, when I was a kid. And so it was like, okay, I don't want to not be able to see my feet ever again. And get those swimming shoes. That's what oh, we got. Water shoes. Yeah, water shoes. That changed everything for me. They have a thick rubber sole, but they're like mesh. Yeah, you're not um, going to so step on any really bottles, like but uh, those aren't going to stop something from coming and nibbling on your calves either. Uh, which I will be <laughs> the first to admit, I am scared of. I, I just, I am. I mean, I don't want to be in the dark water and have some big catfish. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I don't know. I think That's the just... coolest place would be Lake Malawi. I think that yeah, and the water is awesome. clear there, so that's a totally different yeah, thing. I think I would stay with. Is clear it clear water. there? That's a big it's crystal lake. Is it clear, clear there everywhere. 
Well, even when we were in Cuba, there was that part on the side around the corner that was like, it was murky and black over there. It's um, like, I'm not, I'm not going, going in there. Oh, so you went to that's Cuba? true. And the current the was like crazy. Yeah, oh, we did. That's cool. Yeah, you guys would love Cuba. Cuba was very calm, beautiful. And the, all the water in like the other direction was just shallow. The beaches are just forever. were the best. Cool. It was just gorgeous. You could yeah. snorkel and stuff. I mean, cool. whenever I do those, I use um, so if I use my credit card to buy stuff for the gallery, it collects points, um, like travel points. So then I just take those points, and then we can travel Smart. somewhere, and I can make videos and just yeah, claim all of it, and mm-hmm. it works out really, really and well. It's a business expense. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all it ends up being. And it's and it works out really well. We haven't been able to go anywhere for a couple of years, but I hope to. Uh, I would definitely do Cuba again. Um, I loved going in the water. Well, Mexico was pretty interesting too because I could swim with like a lot of cichlids and yeah. you know that sort of thing. But um, if I was to do like just a couples thing, Cuba for sure, hundred percent. The beaches there, I mean, just beautiful, gorgeous. We were close to that. We were in yeah. in the Florida Keys, so right across the river from that or the river the ocean from that the river but uh i mean if i can see th- the bottom i'm fine i'll mm-hmm. snorkel I'll, I'll do any of that but if i'm going into water like we live on the potomac river and you take one step into that river your feet are gone you can't mm-hmm. see them it's like they don't exist because the water is just mud Shit. that no i'm not into and every single video that i've seen of people collecting in like the amazon and stuff like that it's like brown nasty water i i'm not interested in that but i'm a diva i mean i'll, I'll be the first to admit it <laughs> well i can't swim so and she can't swim you can't no, swim i can't swim <clears throat> you can swim <laughs> when we were in the florida can keys i can't swim well but i do you doggy you <laughs> doggy paddle, can, doggy paddle. <laughs> can i can i tell the story yeah, it worked. can i tell the story <laughs> it worked I, so we're in the Florida Keys. Uh, we were we were in Isla Mirada, and uh, if you ever saw the the Netflix show Bloodline, we were staying at the resort that that show was filmed at, and uh, we were in kayaks. And they were the I, f- I forget what they're called. I own kayaks, but we sit down inside the kayaks. But these were the kind that when you're on the kayak, you're sitting on top of it. If if you if you know right. what I'm talking about, and uh, you just she tipped hers over. You like you. You bear, you don't get in right. You just you get you kind of get in it. There's a bit of a groove, but you're mostly outside. right. Like your legs, your okay. legs are completely exposed. You're you're basically sitting mm-hmm. on top of it, and the water was like three feet deep. It wasn't deep at all, crystal clear, and there was a huge had to be four foot around stingray that went underneath us, and I she was thirty feet away from me, and I'm like, hey, look, it's a stingray because I love stingrays, right. and he was swimming on over to her. And I guess she leaned over to try to see him and just went whoop and flipped into the water. And uh, I've never seen someone panic. I felt bad, but at the same time, when I was able to get her back up onto the kayak, I had to laugh about it. She was freaking out thinking that this stingray was going to eat her. And she was saying it in the water. (laughs) The water's only up to her knees. And she's like, it's going to eat me. (laughs) And yeah, she freaked out over a stingray that was probably 50 yards away at that point and i'll never forget getting back into that that kayak or whatever i my butt was sticking up in the air (laughs) i mean i was just like i didn't care how i got back in it i just couldn't be in that water it was crazy had to laugh it was a beautiful stingray i was screaming (laughs) yeah i don't know if i'd want to flop around with a stingray. No, I certainly... I would want to. Certainly wouldn't want to either. But wouldn't take much to get a little poke. <laughs> and mention a kayak. Rachel's been kayaking, and I'm, I'm for, I think she's done with YouTube, too. I don't think she's coming back. I just think... I don't think it worked out for her. Um, and uh, she's on a different life path right now with somebody, and... But I don't think she's coming back to YouTube. Maybe a couple little videos here and there, but um, you know, it's just not doing what we had hoped for her, but... I think also that she's unwilling to like make like videos that grab people's attention. Very good at educational, but and that's that was the the downside. I don't think she got into YouTube soon enough. She got right into the t- right around the time when 
like you have to clickbait to survive. Be a little bit and the word flashier. clickbait is, a, is, is exaggerated anyways. Of course I want you to click this video and I'm going to bait you with a good thumbnail <laughs> and title. Mm -hmm. But it's from the video and the title is about the video. But if mm -hmm. you do anything that's sensationalized, because that's all it is, Oh, you're clickbaiting. Well, original clickbait was when something was uh, the thumbnail yeah. that had nothing. Yeah. Oh, original yeah. clickbait yeah. is like misleading. <laughs> Boobs. Boobs. Like yeah. click the thumbnail because it's got this hot girl. <laughs> but And that's what YouTube used to base rankings off of and how many views and how they'd recommend was based only on clicks. Yeah. So you could put a hot girl as your thumbnail mm -hmm. um, and then your video could be about, I don't know, turtles giving birth. <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't do that. Turtles hatching. Well, you know, I'd still watch that. <laughs> something, something silly, but you get the idea. And then it turned to the, the whole watch time yes. thing. What are they actually watching? And for how long? And what do they do right after that? That makes sense. I think the, well, I the word know. clickbait is just abused too much now. If you, if yeah. you use a, yeah. a flashy title and, and maybe a gentle manipulation yeah. of what the video is, people are like, clickbait, yeah. clickbait. It's stupid. I mean, uh, it's just a way to insult. You know, and um, it's gotten to the point where the, um, and maybe it's been like, well, I don't remember it being like this. I've been on the internet for a long time. And it's gotten to the point where there's, people have gotten th the idea in their head that there's no consequences or, reper or repercussions to anything they do on the internet. And I think it's gotten way worse since the pandemic because everyone just feels like 100%. they never have to see anybody so in person ever again. Now, I know John might get a few hateful things just as much as me, but I don't know from a woman's perspective. Lisa, now that you're on camera more, do you feel like you get more negative things said? Never or from do women. you feel like it's always been... Uh, yeah. No. It, I mean... Just like hateful things. Yeah, or, I mean, I think the worst one, not that it bothers me, uh, is people saying something about my voice or... Um, I'm annoying or something and it's so funny because I just look at it and laugh and I'm like <laughs> well whatever you know I'm not going to stop making videos because you made a mean well comment. it's easy for somebody <laughs> to say quietly through a yeah. computer yeah. with no profile picture or anything for you to look at mm -hmm. and I don't think your voice is annoying it's unique well also yet here they are my voice watching, is annoying commenting <laughs> No. I was saying right to Tamara, John, not you, John's Kelly. voice would get, John's <laughs> voice would get annoying over time because he sounds like a, um, like Careful. a, uh, like a sport, sp sports radio host. Well, that's a huge compliment. <laughs> and up, thank you very much. And up next are the that's tiger. A, that's a voice that some people uh, Vampire have. tiger. Thank host. you very much, Joey <laughs> Mullen. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> <Yeah>. that's, <funny. laughs> that's a compliment, and you don't Lisa, even know. Lisa, what do you say we go on a date, <laughs> and uh, you know, get a little. <laughs> that's <laughs> you. Well, my, I have like twenty voices. So you've you've it. spent a lot of time with me, not on camera though. You know, I. That's how yeah, I. Talk. Like I don't that. I don't put it on yeah. for the camera. I mean, I, I clean it up. That's yeah. true. That's true. You curse a little bit. You oh, I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you clean you clean your the way you, things you say up in, um, on camera, but you don't really your voice doesn't nope. change. The, only, the, the the biggest one that changes is Dustin from Dustin's Fish Tanks. I know it's still him and he still talks, but like he's just so mellow and chill he in is. person. He's so <laughs> calm for the most part. And I'm like. I'm like, are you okay? Is, d did you hit your head? Did you have a concussion or something? Everything, everything good? That's funny. No. Mm -hmm. I actually had to, uh, and, and you know, I probably shouldn't say this, but why not? Huh. I, uh, I made the word annoying a blocked word on my channel because That's they were using people. that to yeah. describe her voice. Yeah. And I was like, I, annoy, I'm defending annoy, my wife here. I can't him. have that. At them all. So I had to take that off. Yeah, there's there's certain key phrases and words and names and things that I uh, get rid of too because you know if my kids are on my, they they'll come after my daughter. They come after this or that and the other thing. So all it does is it goes into your filter. Nobody sees it. They still think that everybody right. can see it. Um, but all it does is it targets it for me so mm -hmm. I can get rid of them. I typically don't look into that filter anymore. Yeah. But um, at one point I was like get your fill because nobody sees it not even me <laughs> you're literally just wasting your own time yeah. being hateful Gilf is another one so i had oh, to God. had to block that Stop. <laughs> oh grandma <laughs> uh, anyway <laughs> but yeah I, I actually did you really have to block yep. that i actually go I on that it. filter just to see what's been hidden just like i said that that gives me more fuel to want to continue and work harder 
because if yeah. I'm annoying you now, you've gotten so much you better. better watch out. Yeah, wait, I'm gonna yeah. annoy you even more. Yeah, that's what I always <laughs> say. Like when somebody doesn't like me, you're gonna you're gonna see me so yeah. much. <laughs> you're gonna choke on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, I think you've improved uh, tremendously. John's been pretty consistent with like. I've always been bad. The way he presents is <laughs> been pretty consistent. Oh. Consistently average. <laughs> That's right. Now. Consistently, um, consistently yeah. mediocre. Yeah. No, I think that you've gotten out of like a comfort zone and you're willing to try different types of videos and take risks. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are no longer willing to innovate. They'll just do what everybody else is doing because that's what's working. But if you really want to create a niche like you did or, you know, um, you have to take risks and to, and innovate in order to move the hobby forward. That's how we change it and that's how we evolve and that's how we grow it is innovation. And the only way to innovate is you have to take risks. Some things are going to work. Some things aren't. Um, I've taken so many risks. Some of them, most of them do not I was just work. about to say, most but of them don't they work. Do. Not on you, but yeah, on but all when of they us. D- yeah, but when when they do, man, mm-hmm. it, it's huge. Everybody grows. Like when I, when I was going viral, like completely viral, just insane. I couldn't hand, I didn't even know what to do. Everybody was growing with me. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody getting into the recommended f- uh, and up next or whatever it's called these days. Yeah. You know, everybody just being inspired and doubling down. And it's a it's a trickling effect. And it doesn't. I'm just happy that everybody's big now. Yeah. And it's not like I'm this big channel anymore. And you know, at some point we can even stop talking about it, about size, because you told me size doesn't matter. You promise. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think she's with a guy that's only 5'9"? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. You know, I... Because d- oh. I'm only 5'3". Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I think Lisa's the same height as you. How I'm tall are you, Lisa? Yeah, and how tall are you, Six John? feet. Yeah, I, 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 I tower <laughs> over you, Mullen. <laughs> <laughs> Six foot with my four inch stilettos. <laughs> Part of my Santa hat was still on me. I wanted to mention, you, you talked about uh, getting into that zone where everything's working and, and you were talking about you didn't know what to do. Those are the best times. I've had that myself, never like uh, on the recommended or, or like, trending page or anything like that but we've had it where we've just caught the algorithm and we're like we're rolling Mm -hmm. that's really stressful for me because i'm what i want Mm -hmm. is okay how do i keep it this way i don't care about the money side of it i mean that's great too but it's like this is amazing how do i like my biggest fear is that it stops and that's Mm -hmm. i stress about things that i should not stress out about i should be happy well, that you happens. do want to replicate success. You do need to replicate success. It, My downside was I got, I got a little too comfortable um, because the videos that for me mm-hmm. that eventually were trending and going viral were, um, they were good videos, but they fer- focused around unboxings and adding new fish and, mm-hmm. it, you know, something like that in the title. And then I just got comfortable and complacent with the idea that, oh, I just got to do that. And this is, and then I lost interest because I'm mm-hmm. not even trying anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and then because of I'm losing interest, I just didn't make videos as often. You I stopped go, having as many ideas. Yeah, I, I just, I, I go a week or two without making a video and not care because I'm not excited to yeah. do this. Um, but if I can get away from and just, you know, start doing, like I was building things today for a video and mm-hmm. just, you know, just have to find um, a new niche within my channel that i'm really excited about and it will translate well on onto video but mm-hmm. um after 14 years 13 14 years i'm not even i don't even know how long it's been now of non-stop making videos these things happen it's happened to me a number of times where you yeah. just like yeah. kind of lose your stride mm-hmm. um and that energy because you've been doing the same thing for yeah. two or three years and complacency you know, the worst part is when like no go ahead yeah the worst part is like when people will judge you like, Oh, Joey, you do this or you do that. And I'm like, you know, how long I've been doing this Mm -hmm. and somebody's only been doing it a year or two. Yeah. You have no, nothing to stand on. You like always have to be reinventing yourself. That's true. Complacency is the worst possible thing. Mm -hmm. Killer of all things. And it's so (laughs) hard to not be complacent in this business. Mm-hmm. I mean, because yeah. something's working and you're like, well, 
let's just keep rolling with that and and that's tough mm -hmm. and and we've actually we're making a big shift uh as we speak i'm, I'm filming things in a mm -hmm. completely different style than than what i've been doing because i I've, I've realized you know the 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 way we were doing things before was great and it worked and w we got exposure to a lot of people and we got yeah. real comfortable doing that and it's like okay now i'm to a point where i'm making the same videos over and over and over again no i have to stop right. and so we're gonna we're, we're making a shift it's not going to be an immediate thing but we have to because if you get yeah. too comfortable it you, you see it in the numbers and and sure yeah. you see it in the money yeah. too but you see it in the numbers and it's there's nothing more depressing than that <laughs> to know it's your fault yeah. that things are happening that way well, that's what YouTube built its creators around was numbers and that creator studio and analytics. Yeah. Um, it's what pushes creators and to, to, but it, it can, it can make you better, but you almost have to obsess over it to mm -hmm. a point where like, you know, everything about, and YouTube will show you like when somebody stops watching your video, for example. Yeah. Like I had to give up on all of that. It's just, uh, I don't care anymore. Just like the videos, hopefully it works. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, well. I'll make videos until I go back to like seven people watching every video. <laughs> I'll let it go to that. <laughs> I will. Cause that's It'll how be I started me on all my different <laughs> that's how, devices. That's how I started. <laughs> and that's how I'm going out. Like I'm not going out on a high note. Like, all right guys, I hope you've enjoyed 15 years of video. And I'm done. <laughs> nope. I'm going to go out when there's four people watching me. <laughs> hey everyone. It's Joey again. And welcome back. <laughs> Hey, J yeah. Hey, John, Lisa, and Tamara, <laughs> that are in the, the only three views I get now. <laughs> John's like uh, Lisa doesn't watch anymore. I don't know who that other dude is. <laughs> yeah, that's how I I think I see going. Um, I got other pl ideas and things and businesses and things and that I'd like to start up and do, and we'll see how everything goes, but. I um we just watched uh, Fast and Furious the other night and uh you know when Dom was like I live my life <laughs> a quarter mile at a time <laughs> that's me <laughs> as soon as he said that I looked at her did the eyebrows huh? <laughs> that's me <laughs> yeah. relate relate so which one <laughs> of the eight did Are, you watch <laughs> um the first we one the first it's one, not yeah. my favorite I'd say the second one is oh our camera just went out uh oh a sec. I can oh. Fix it. there oh, we look. are. Well, there I am. <laughs> oh, there everything's are. a mess today. I got two cameras on the sides that ended up shutting off, and this one just died, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Get the one of those adapters. <laughs> plug it into the wall. Welcome to... Welcome, I have one, but I don't know why it doesn't work. I don't know why it doesn't... Anyways, welcome to Amateur Hour <laughs> with Joey. At least it's not an echo. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. An echo. We had an a echo? huge. Pro I had a huge problem. Oh, you couldn't figure it out, like the echo, and you'd hear yourself. No, it, it was. Everybody else heard it. We had two USB uh -huh. microphones. We were sitting in the same room, and the microphones were picking up both of us. So uh -huh. when I would talk, it would be my microphone would pick me up and hers, so it would sound like an echo, which is why we bought these, so that that would stop. Uh, and it was a running joke on live streams that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys really invested in some good stuff. Are you going to do your podcast again? I don't think so. You do your live videos. Yeah, I mean, we, we've we actually... Well, we talked about that. There's a possibility we might go back to kind of the podcast style, but it won't be anytime soon. It would be done out of necessity, because like you and I talked about in Dallas, we've looked at a few places that have no internet at all. So we've started to come up with a plan. Okay, if we don't have internet... <clears throat> we can always use our phones to upload videos and stuff like that. That's no big deal. What are we going to do to replace that live stream? Cause the live streams become a huge part of our channel. And the way we looked at it was we would just record like this, um, answering people's questions like we would do on a live stream and then just upload it as a hour and a half long video. Um, to replace the live streams yeah. and I'm like well if we're going to do that we might as well upload it as a podcast too so we've talked about that mm -hmm. part of it but right. uh, I loved doing the podcast so much you were a guest a couple of times on it um, but it I just ran out of stuff to talk about 
Oh, you're talking about that podcast from oh. way back. Well, I think I think the idea of the podcast, if you guys were to do one, and every, I think like a lot of people are starting them up too, especially since I've kind of come up, didn't come up with this format, but now that I've shown people that you could just talk to fish people mm -hmm. and not have a topic or a plan. Yeah. And people love it. You can talk about topics outside of the hobby. Yeah, we talk about stuff. everything. Um, and uh, you can bring on specific people. and mm -hmm. Well, for the most part, I just pick people that I think I can hold a conversation with. Yeah. And um, sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't. But for the most part, all of them I've enjoyed. I enjoy all of them except this one. Of course. Know. I mean, geez, <laughs> I'm looking at the clock wondering when it's going to be over. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I'd like to do this again with you guys because this was just more of an icebreaker and a little flirty conversation would be a job. I didn't realize you were I think that me? we could dive. <laughs> well, that's my, that's, <laughs> you never see me coming. <laughs> but I think that, um. So the grooming process oh begins. God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, yeah, I think we could do this again. Uh, I definitely want to. I went and booked two podcasts back to back for, we have Jeff Sensky next, mm -hmm. um, at 7.30 our time, which is in two minutes, which is fine. Oh. Uh, he's not in the waiting room yet, but, um, I would like to do this again, um, and I think that I would like to, well, now that you know how easy these are, I don't know if you guys will have time for me again, but um, I'd like to get I'd like to get a bunch of the guests that we've already had on again in the new mm -hmm. year, because there's just so much more I want to talk about, yeah. and if I narrow it to an hour, hour and a half, it's just not enough time. I need mm -hmm. a good two hours, mm -hmm. Well, uh, um, maybe even longer, who knows? And if yeah. we did this again next year, um, we'll have a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah, a lot. I yeah. mean, we got a lot of stuff going on right now that we just we just can't talk we just about. Can't it's talk about it. It, it, it's not like we'd be in trouble, but it's just one of those things where we can't. She, Lisa's literally his hype man. He's like, we can't talk about. It. She's like, we can't talk about it. <laughs> but we're gonna have a lot of stuff going on. This we're is Lisa Flav right here. <laughs> yeah, Lisa Flav. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, thank you guys for your time. What do we shout out? Uh, what's the store website called? Let's do let's do all your links and then make sure you send them to me. So I'll include them in the description below. It is for those that are only keep listening. Keepfishkeeping.com. <laughs> and it's because KG Tropicals got stolen from us. But uh, keepfishkeeping.com and uh, live betas only serving the U.S., unfortunately. And uh, all of your aquarium supplies and all. And shirts like this, too. So <laughs> there you go. And then the website, or I'm sorry, the channel's KG Tropicals. Instagram's KG Tropicals. And uh, TikTok. TikTok. OnlyFans. <laughs> we on now TikTok. have a TikTok as of two days ago. So, And that's also KG Tropicals. Good luck. I gave it a shot. I'm on there too. I gave it a shot for like a month. I was like, I have no clue what I'm doing. I don't want to do I don't know what I'm doing so either. Pace. Yeah, it's super <laughs> fast. 60 seconds. Well, I used to do these 60 second videos on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and those did really well, but. TikTok's just a different world. I'm not willing to dance. Yeah, you got to be funny. So. <laughs> I dance yeah, all the time funny. on TikTok. Y'all just have to subscribe to find out. Yeah. <laughs> stilettos that make them six foot. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks again. Uh, everybody else, my fellow tank mates. That was another episode of Aquariums Unfiltered. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.